this particular question is a little more advanced. We're only going to be doing part A here, so I'll just cross out part B. But what makes it advanced is for two reasons. First, they talk about the runner using boat here, accelerating for some time, and then later he maintains that speed. So in that sense, the acceleration, it's not the same throughout the entire problem. But we can break the problem down into two sections where within each section, the acceleration is constant. For the first part, he's accelerating for the first three seconds. And then for the later part, he is not accelerating and maintaining a constant speed. The other thing that makes it slightly more involved is the actual algebra involved in finding out what we need to find out. But you'll see that in a second. To try and make sense of what's going on here, it's important not to just talk about two different times now because in the middle, his acceleration changes. So we basically have three different spots in time we might be interested in. The first time we're interested in is at the beginning when he's just getting ready to push off again. And we know that at this point his speed is not going anywhere and we can call this to be uh, position of zero because that's the starting line. Uh, we'll call these time zero, V naught and X naught. And later, three seconds later, that's when we know he stops accelerating. So V1 here is whatever his maximum speed is. Though we don't know what X1 is. We can probably figure it out. Um, he is done accelerating, so he is running really, really fast. So we give him some speed line. And we know that in between the acceleration from zero to one is something. We're assuming again that's constant. And then another time we're interested in is at 9.69 seconds, his record setting time, called at time two, he maintains the same speed. So it's also at V max. And then this X2 we know because that's when he crosses the finish line should be exactly a hundred meters from the starting point. So that's here, here he is going through the finish line, still running very fast. And then of course he proceeds to do his record setting pose. In between here, we're told that he maintains the same speed. So from one to two, his acceleration is zero. So that's the situation we're dealing with. Looking back in the question, we're asked for his maximum speed and his acceleration, which is this guy and this guy because this is the next part here, he's just maintaining in his, his speed having an acceleration of zero. As a side note, just to show you, another way of visualizing what's going on is if you do a velocity versus time graph, and this is in meters per second, basically we start out at zero speed to begin with at time equals zero seconds, and then we accelerate uniformly up to three seconds, after which we maintain the same speed, which is my V max, until we hit 9.69 seconds. And altogether, the amount of distance you cover, which as you may know, is the area under the curve of the velocity versus time graph would be a hundred meters. So then the key idea is because the acceleration is changing between here and here, we have to treat zero to three seconds completely separate from between three to 9.69 seconds. So let's start collecting what we know and hopefully that will lead us to where we need to go. From zero to three seconds, what we know is X1 is equal to X0 plus V0T plus one half a t square. We don't know what a is, but we know what t is. And x1 we also do not know. So we have two unknowns here for this one equation. So there's not much we can do with it right right now. We also know that v1, which is v max, it's equal to v naught, which is zero, 
So we can actually cross out a bunch of this these stuff. Plus a t. Again, we don't know v max, we don't know a, so we probably need a little more information to put it all together. So let's look at the other bit, three to nine point six nine seconds. In this case, we're dealing with x2, but the initial speed is actually x1 and t1 and so forth. So uh, just to make that distinction here, we're going to go 0 to 1, 0 to 1, because this here is going to be involving v1, not v0, and t1 to 2 instead, plus 1 half a t1 to 2. And this is also a 1 to 2, which is 0 because it's constant speed. And then we know because the acceleration of that part is 0, v2 is equal to v1, which is v max. So looking at all this, what we are able to do is we can put x1 into here like that. And we know v max using this. So we can put it all together and ultimately solve for, say, acceleration. So let's get a little more space here. So taking this equation and subbing in the appropriate things, I got x2 is equal to x1, which is in turn 1 half a t0 to 1 square plus v1, which is v max, which is this expression, so that's a t0 to 1 times t1 to 2 plus nothing. Out of this expression, we know this, we know that, we know that, and we know that. So the only unknown we have is a, which makes it simple to solve. And for those of you who know this is, the first chunk here would be the area of this triangle, whereas this chunk is this height times this time. So overall, the two separate sections of the area adds up to give you the overall displacement. In any case, we do some algebra now to isolate A. So we can factor out A and we're left with 1 half t0 to 1 all square plus t0 to 1 times t1 to 2 is equal to x2. So a is equal to x2 over t0 to 1 all square plus t0 to 1 t1 to 2. Good practice to isolate the variable first before you put in all the numbers. X2, as we know, is 100 meters, one half, and then we have three seconds square plus three seconds, oops, don't forget the units. And then the time between one and two is 9.69 minus three seconds, giving us 6.69 seconds. We end up getting Again, checking the units, meters per second square, meters per second times seconds. Everything works out in terms of the units. The actual number gives us 4.07 meters per second square. Now that we know the acceleration, we can come back to this guy and multiply by 3, essentially, that's t0 to 1, multiply by 3 seconds, we will get our Vmax. And since this is the final answer, we're going to chop it off as 3 sig figs at meters per second. Again, to put it in neat final sentences, the acceleration is 4.07 meters per second square, and the maximum velocity is 12.2 meters per second. And while the algebra was a little more involved because it involves combining different equations, the key idea to walk away with is the formula that we are working with only works 
if the acceleration is constant and if the acceleration changes, we can break down the problem into different sections within which the acceleration is constant within each section.